Okay, so hopefully we're continuing from yesterday, but hopefully we will avoid all the confusion of the case. That I think that was the biggest thing yesterday. So let's just try to start not fresh in terms of ideas, but in terms of like like getting the facts clear. Okay, so Pasuk said this is 2016. So I think the translation we settled on is take the garment, like as a command, take the garment of the of one who cosigns on behalf of a stranger. Okay, now if anyone is like me, then when you hear these financial terms and their eyes start to glaze over, mm -hmm. so we'll explain. Um, take the garment of one who cosigns on behalf of a stranger and one who takes collateral on behalf of a strange woman. Okay, or a stranger woman. Not stranger, like stranger than a woman who is a stranger, right? Um, okay, so the case is like this. Let's use the same case as yesterday, even though David is not present physically right now. <laughs> okay, so, um, so David borrows money from Zev. But Zev is kind of worried that David's not going to be able to pay it back. So Isaac agrees, Isaac, who doesn't know David, okay, that's the stranger, agrees to co sign for him. I guess we shouldn't have used brothers for that. But, I haven't seen him here. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, so, um, uh, so Isaac agrees to co sign for that loan, which means that either way, Zev's going to get his money. If either David pays it back as he owes it, or if David can't uh, pay it back, then Isaac is going to have to um, is going to have to pay out. Okay, so Zev gets his money, and theoretically everyone's happy. In reality, not everyone's happy. Why? Because David doesn't pay it back, and then I have to pay it back. Yeah, and what this is saying basically is that, um, and this we I think we did agree that this is at least for them to David. This is talking probably talking to you, right? You should take Isaac's garment. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then that's what it's saying because he co-signed for a stranger. Right. Yeah. yeah but Isaac is a stranger to Zev too. Uh, no, not necessarily. There, we don't really know the nature of the relationship. But, but the main thing is that David is a stranger to Isaac, and Isaac co-signed for him. And that's a stupid move because if you co-sign for someone who you know and trust. So then you know whether or not like they're going to be reliable to pay back. But if you co-sign for a total stranger, you're basically just putting yourself at risk uh, without any like benefit to you other than like the fact that you helped out uh, this random guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So you're just thinking like, oh yeah, yeah, like random guy on the street. Oh, I'll totally cover your 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 loans if you get into debt. That's what it means to speaking oh. here. Yeah, uh, that's what it means to co-sign for a stranger, you know? So what the puzzle is telling, oh, and where did the garment come in? Because basically, let's say you can't pay Zev because you were counting on the fact that W was gonna like be able to pay him. So then we have to, so Zev has to confiscate Isaac's garment for uh, like, you know, to, to pay out basically. Like ordinarily Isaac would be paying money. Right, why is Isaac not paying money? Because he didn't have money because he didn't plan on David not being able to pay his loan. And it was a, it was a bad move, mm -hmm. right? It was the fact? Yeah. Okay, so then we did, we just read the Matutus David, um, and uh, and then that's kind of where we ended off yesterday. Let me just uh, open this up. and just like twenty. Oops, sorry, it's a minor. Wait, Wait, did it? Did yeah. The cosigner have to be the only audience. Uh, who else? Well, I, I don't know, but who else would be told to take the garment? Oh, uh, that's where I'm getting that the cosigner is the. Uh... Right, but it could be that the audience, like. Like let's say Isaac is yeah. the oh wait, wait no hold on yeah wouldn't Isaac be the like like they telling me to take it but I like Isaac's the one like oh I see I, he's the like, one who's like learning from it he's learning from yeah yeah right correct so according to this David then the audience is Zev but we could open our mind to another possibility of someone else yeah so let's look at the David and then we'll see that Matus David bottom right Lakaf big though Lakaf Lamash Lakaf Lamashkon as Begat Ha'arev, take as a, oh, that's why you're taking the garment also, right? So, sorry, I got it wrong. It's not that you're taking the garment to like, as as payment. Mm -hmm. It's that you're taking his garment to ensure that he does raise, you know, somehow get the money to pay you back. Mm. Right, the mock it's a close. Oh, it's which a, is the same case as in the Torah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 it is, it is, yeah. But we're, not, we're gonna try to avoid going yeah. to the Torah. I don't mean that in general. <laughs> we're gonna try to avoid going to the Torah. The problem, yeah, so basically is the Torah has this case then the Matusion quoted, and I don't know about everyone else, I got caught up in thinking he was quoting the case because it's the same case. He was just using the Lashon and then it mixed things and got really confusing. So mm -hmm. so we might get back into that, but like, we're gonna hope not to. Um, yeah. So he 
saying that Zeb should take Isaac's garment, like before he's even supposed to be collecting money from the other. Here's the, let's go through the timeline now that we've, we've gone through the, the case. The timeline is like this. David wants to borrow money from Zev. Zev is not sure whether David will pay it back. Isaac, who doesn't know David, says, don't worry. If he doesn't pay it back, I got him covered. And Isaac, in his mind, thinks, oh, of course he's going to pay it back. Days go by. David says, hey, man, I can't pay it back. Zev comes to collect from Isaac. And Isaac doesn't have any money. So Zev says, I have to take your garment as collateral until you can pay me back. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then now you're stuck because you don't have a garment and you can't pay him back. And now you're in debt. And Dove is like all frolicking because he's, he got off easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now the Matus Dove says like this. Take as a collateral the garment of the cosigner of Isaac. That's how we get that he's talking to Zev. Don't be guilty in this. I mean, don't feel guilty about this. Okay. Uh, this guy became a co signer for a stranger on his own volition. Isaac didn't have to do this. Isaac just went and decided to like be co signer for, for David. And he lowered himself through this. And we interpreted that to mean not that he humbled himself, Isaac put himself at a disadvantage. Uh, by making him dependent on, you know, making his own like financial um, security tied up in David's reliability for paying the loan. Okay, and then so that's the whole idea. And then what's the second half? Uva Nachria and regarding a strange woman, which we said yesterday, by the way, strange woman in Mishlei often means either a woman who you're like not married to, who uh, like is who you know, let's say like uh, a woman who you commit adultery with, or like a, a prostitute. And then on a much level, it's talking about like heresy, but he takes it in a much simpler way. He just says it's like the female version of the word czar, just a strange a woman who you don't know, all right? Not like a sketchy woman. Uh, and he says, Kefal Davar, this is repeating the matter, Lomar to say, Bain Arav Avur Ish, Bain Avur Isha, whether you are co signing for a man or co signing for a woman. And we said there that like the case there is like Isaac might feel like, you know, pity or compassion on like some poor woman and cosigns on behalf of her. But just because you feel pity, pity or compassion doesn't mean that she's like a responsible financial person. So like, it's the same mistake. The yeah. point is it's not exclusively talking about a woman. It's uh, uh, it's not exclusively talking about a woman or a man, right? It's talking about either. And and so the second half of positive coin to Mrs. David is exactly the same as the first half. It's just a different case. Right. Yeah. And the woman or man that we're talking about in the context of the case that we said would be David, David. meaning it's, yeah. it's the original. Yeah, exactly, David. Yeah. David or Davida, yeah. Right. Um, okay, so, oh yeah? yeah. I don't, it's always weird, like the, the names that, uh, I feel like they're new feminizations, you know, yeah. that like you don't see in like, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's an interesting trend, let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they don't go the other way. No one's taking female names and then making them into male names. No, yeah. yeah, no one's doing like C4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's weird. All right. Um, okay, so the questions we had. Oh, did I not write down the questions? Hold on. Oh, we didn't write down questions yesterday. That's right. We got we got so caught up in the in the, in, the, in the facts that we didn't do questions. All right, fine. That makes things easier, actually. So the questions we ended off with with Mr. David is, the, so the Hava Amina here, is that you think you that think he should feel guilty for taking Isaac's garment, even though Isaac got himself into the trouble? Mm -hmm. so the question is like, what is the emotional havamina must kind of here? Like, what, why would you feel guilty, and then why do you need to be told not to? We also like need to figure out what is the practical ramification of this. Certainly, there's a practical assumption part of the case, which is that Isaac shouldn't co-sign for a stranger, but the puzzle does not seem to be directed towards Isaac. <clears throat> it's directed towards the the person who is uh, the the who is owed the money. And do we have another uh, question? Well, I mean, I guess what's interesting, why, why it seems like there's enough Havamina by the Lord. Uh, yeah, right. So what is the sub, sub Havamina? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm fine right now saying that that's just the, um, uh, that that's just the case, uh, what do you call it? Um, that's just another, Emotional case that might come up. Like, let's say, for example, like, like you as a man with money, one way that you might be motivated to help someone is David starting a business, and I want to help get him back on his feet. The other is there's this poor woman who doesn't have very much, uh, like, financial mobility in society because she's a woman. So I want to help her out. Like, 
you know, like two different kinds of mercy or kindness, you know. So I, I, I don't think it's, a, if there, there is a Havmina there, but I don't think it's going to be central to the idea according to Mrs. David at least. That's my intuition. This is kind of a question on the topic. Yeah. Um, it seems like a very complex case. Yeah. So I think I mentioned this yesterday that, like, I feel like this probably happened a lot more than happens to us. You know, like, in the same way that, for example, if you explained how credit cards work to someone in Shlomo's time and you tried to give a Mishlei case about that, he'd be like, whoa, 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 like, why are you going to this weird case? You know, yeah. but like, for, for him, like, you know, that, that's, uh, you know. I mean, in some ways, it is like credit cards. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I imagine also there's some phenomenal this is going to highlight. Right. Um, Why don't you switch that chair behind me? I think this is a faulty chair. Faulty, and I don't want to just go around trying on all the chairs anymore. Nice. I'd rather sit here and complain. <laughs> Good squeak. <laughs> yeah. Spray some uh, W forty on. Unfortunately, there. it's not going to work because. The back is broken. That's what's making uh, this week. Yeah. All the doors are quiet. Yeah. The doors are really yeah. here. It's quiet. Yeah. It's yeah. No, it's weird. It's great. Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> what was that? We're getting a break in tomorrow now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. So, what is the Hami Muscana? What is the practical? Uh, idea well i think that it seems like the audience is both like i guess in the concept of our case zev and isaac meaning uh to zev it's like the half is like it's gonna feel bad about it feel like you shouldn't be doing that mm -hmm. and it's like no it's not not your fault right you shouldn't have signed off on it yeah and like you're stuck in the situation now this is like the legalities of it right like, you just have to do what you have to do yeah and then to isaac it's like um like, yeah, this is your fault. You made <laughs> yeah. a mistake. Yeah. Like, like, don't make this mistake. I guess this is a question also. Uh, given your question about is the audience you, the language of, indicates the audience is you, mm -hmm. but the implication could be it's talking to you as him as the audience, as Isaac as the audience. I keep on saying your names, by the way, because if anyone's listening, then I, they can't see me pointing. <laughs> you know, so that, that's the only reason I keep repeating your names. Um, but, uh, but so the question is, are those two, is there a unity in the idea? Oh, this is what we mentioned yesterday also. Okay, we mentioned this also. And I think this is a, a, a prop, uh, this is a possible route, which is um, Isaac made a mistake, which is he wants to help David out of some sense of compassion or whatever, but he gets himself into a situation where it's a liability for him. So if Zev were to feel guilty about taking Isaac's garment, that would be another version of the same mistake because he's telling himself, oh, like, I, you know, like, uh, I feel bad. I feel pity for Isaac for the fact that he got himself into this situation. Mm -hmm. And I'm now tempted to like take my own financial hit because of my pity for him. But that's just making the same mistake, you know, uh, in a slightly different application. Yeah. Right, like I wasn't planning on giving a free loan. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's not what I was doing. Right, right. You entered into this deal because you you were doing a chesed, but with, with insurance, Right. you know? Uh, and you didn't want to give up that money permanently. Right. So just because he made that mistake doesn't mean that now you have to make that mistake. Yeah. Right. Like I guess it's pointing out the phenomena of like how this can perpetuate itself. Yeah. Like yeah, don't, don't but, let it perpetuate. Right. That, that, the, mistake. The language I used yesterday, which I I, I don't think it actually applies. But like you got to break the cycle. Like right. you know, be be the guy who was nice enough to give the loan, but not nice enough to uh, to just not like give away free money. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you could give. It you could be someone who gives away free money. Right, you, as a decision. Right. Not as a, I made the decision to do it as a loan, but then like, I feel guilted into doing this. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. The, the first time, I, I also mentioned yesterday, this is uh, the, this topic of like co-signing for a stranger comes up several times initially. But I do remember the first time I taught this and it was in Hafter. And there was a, uh, a kid who I was teaching in 11th grade who uh, was very smart and he became a valedictorian, but he would allow himself to get guilted into like, helping kids who he wasn't really friends with study for their tests, you know? And I remember telling him this of like, it got to a point where like, like he was helping them study for like midterms or finals. And it was taking away from his own ability to like study for his own tests. And like, I was saying how like, you know, it is nice to be 
nice, yeah. you know, but if you're doing it and putting yourself in a situation of liability just to feel nice, like you have to evaluate that as a decision. Like just don't, don't let yourself like get sucked into that position. I don't know how relevant that is here, but, but it was good. Like uh, to me, it was like a, a contemporary application of this. It's not the same case, obviously, but yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, did it help? I can't remember. I can't remember. Was he will? Uh, was he uh, strong-willed enough to actually do it? Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I mean, couldn't, couldn't this guy give the argument that I, well, I'm I want my money back, but not if it's gonna you know ruin someone's life and make them not right. Be able to right. So there are uh, there are definitely exceptions to the um, to the rule where you would you would acknowledge that this is a bad policy in general, but like you, you're going to make an exception for this. You're going to be like, and we mentioned uh, yesterday that in Hillel's day of chapter five, the Ramam does say that like Chachamim should be mochal on their money, you know, and, and that you could do that for your own perfection. You could do that for like the sake of this other person. But I think what the emphasis is here is you shouldn't do it out of guilt. Right. You know, and that's really what I want to explore. I feel like the idea is coming from there. Right, I'll talk him, Yeah, don't be guilty about this. And again, it's like the. It is a funny thing. Uh, I mean, I I tell this this way because uh because uh, I, I do like a uh, uh, Cobra Kai, but like, you know, um, like first like hard no mercy, and this is funny. It's telling you not to be merciful, you know, because this is the law. Like the law is that debts should be paid back. Like you, you're owed this money. So like, don't feel like I am being cruel by collecting money that's mine. Yeah. I think a reason that you might specifically feel cruel by yeah. the money um, in this case is because Isaac isn't the one who benefited from your- Ah, right. That's a good point. So you're just taking money from some random guy. Who right. Never, you didn't know him. Right, right. So it feels like a, uh, a, a, a victimization of someone who's innocent. Right. As but, but it's not. It's not right. Right. Yeah. right. He signed up for it. He signed up for it. Like, literally. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> but if I was saying from David, I would be like, "Oh, I gave it to you." Like, there's right. more of a like, I don't know, like visceral, like tit for tat kind of thing. Yeah. Of yeah. Like, if I borrow money from you and then I'm like, you know, I spent it all on, on, like, right. You know, I I, I spent it all on food. And, you know, like like lavish food. That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, like lavish, like like. You know, yeah, yeah. lavish food, and you know, I don't have any way to pay you back. Then, right, right. you know, you're not gonna be like, oh, that's okay. You right, know, right. you're gonna be like, oh, okay, I'm gonna take a quarter until you, you can raise the money. Right. Yeah, you know. because your bank got one up, so now you should theoretically have the funds to pay back. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I benefit, but here when when Dub is the one who's benefiting, and like, and he doesn't have money that you have to you have to collect from me, it feels like. I think because the way that I'm going to be is like, is I'm going to feel not hurt exactly, but it, I'm going to feel like, it, like, like I'm going to be portraying it as an injustice. Mm -hmm. Whereas really what happened is these were the fault of the consequences of my own decision. Right? Yeah. Let's kind of, oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I think, I think that's the, that's something that's happening here is that um, the way that the, the co-signer is going to feel about it and like, like, like talk about it is as an injustice was being done. Right. But he, yeah. Really, it's just the consequences of his own. Exactly. So let me construct a scenario with the whole food thing, because uh, I think this will make it easier. Let's say Zev and David are out to lunch, okay? And like, like, David suddenly realizes like he can't cover the, the cost and Zev is like, oh, I, I got you covered, okay? That would be fine. That'd be like a free will decision of like, oh, I'm doing a chesed for you because you're in a, uh, a, a lower scenario uh, situation. Okay, but let's say in the middle of this thing, Isaac barges into the restaurant and says, "No, guys, guys, I got both you covered." <laughs> so he he forks over the money, and then says, "I can't pay my rent. What am I going to do?" You'd be like, "Well, why did you offer to pay our for our lunch? Like, you just put yourself in a situation like where you just." You know, and 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 if you if you like, that's essentially crunching the timeline to be like an instant foolish decision with an instant bad result. And in that case, I don't think you would be compassionate to him. You'd be like, you shouldn't have offered to pay. Like, well, yeah, I feel like you feel bad for him, but you wouldn't. You you you. you in other words, be more evident 
I'll speak for your feelings when you could say that. <laughs> yeah, it would be evidence emotionally yeah. that he just made a really bad decision. Yeah. 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 No, what are you gonna say? I might, I might like pay his rent. Yeah. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So then maybe that's a bad example. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But say, say, say the way you framed it again. Um, the, the, the way that the ghost owner was going to feel yeah. is that um, he's going to feel like it's an injustice because yeah. all I did was just like help the guy out by, you know, so he could just get a loan. Yeah. And then now you're, you're coming and taking my money. Like, right. Like, you know, and so, but really, it's just the consequences of his actions. Yeah, right. You know, and here's another example. I, I feel like um, uh, evictions always look bad mm. and feel bad. You know, like kicking someone out of their house when they can't pay the rent always feels bad. Now, it feels bad regardless of how they got into that situation. Maybe they just like gambled away all their money and then now they, they like, you know, and that is their fault, but it's still like as the person who's like evicting, it feels really, really, really bad, but like that feeling of badness doesn't correspond to, to actual like worthiness of Rahamim from a standpoint of like decision making, you know? Yeah. Um, I have another example. This is very, especially if the consequence of it is that you're going to be taking a financial hit because of someone else's stupidity. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like the practical consequence here is like, don't allow yourself to, don't let their bad decisions, don't bear the cons don't needlessly bear the consequences of other people's bad decisions mm -hmm. that they knowingly made. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this, this is um, something I posted in the chat this morning. Oh, um, I didn't see it. I just saw yeah, it yeah, posted. Yeah. 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 So um, um, I was reading the Google Summer Code like guidelines for mentors, mm -hmm. and and basically like it, it, they gave several examples of like like several types of cases of students who are not doing like doing their work like they, they just disappear or they're just like you know yeah or, or whatever they're, they're, put, they're like being very inconsistent or like yeah. you know um and it says if, if they're doing any of those things just like fail them because there, there's like evaluations and mm -hmm. they fail the evaluations mm -hmm. and it, say, it says you know you might feel guilty about doing this mm -hmm. but don't because you know even if they they like if they, even if they say like they're going to be better you know they didn't do what they were supposed to have been, mm -hmm. been doing for like a month, you yeah. know. Um, and you know, you might, in, in a sense, you might feel guilty as a mentor that you didn't do something right, but like it's on them for not doing the work that they were supposed mm -hmm. to be doing, right? Yeah, yeah. And in that sense, you could extend it to other areas that have nothing to do with post signing. Yeah, you know, like, I feel like it's you like you're like taking the consequences of someone else. You're like taking the consequences of someone else's bad decision on yourself yeah. because they're free, they're feeling like it's an injustice. Right, you're throwing yourself under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> that's <what they> say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good move. Okay, so let's, should we do Rubina Yona? Okay. Uh, Lakaf, uh, left, second one down. Lakaf digdoki arab zar uba'ad nafriya khala vlehu. Yish lepart lakaf makor. Okay, so you sing, you, I think makor is a uh, infinitive. Uh, you can take lakaf as to take. Okay, I think. Beshekel kishchov adoni hamelach uba ad nakria chavlehu mish maskono mashachno. I don't know if this is a verb or a noun. Milashen chavol yashiv rasha vehim al shnei mishkal. Okay, this is all grammatical stuff, which we'll ignore and hope that we can still read it. Chavol tachvol ufi apir tazeh in kol chadash tachas inyan hapadu kaze. What? What? According to this, there's no kiddush. You just saying that? I've never seen Brandon Yona say that. Is he okay with it? Let's see. Go. Let's read on. Did he go on? Please tell me he goes on. Okay, but not on. Okay, good. No, okay. So that, that was that was he was reading it to critique it, which he also doesn't usually do. He only usually mentions uh, if he mentions all the Jerusalem, it's because he um he uh, he he thinks both of them have merit. I've never seen him do that before. That's weird. Yeah. It gave me a heart attack there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, it looked like it was the end. I know, yeah, yeah, it ended, uh, yeah. But not on the farish, lakach tzivoy. Okay, so that's how we've been learning it. Lakach is a tzivoy. We're on the next page, left column still. Uh, commandment, v'chavlehu min tamon ba'arts chevlo. Okay, uh, that one we actually do need to look up. Uh, Yov, is there my Tanakh back there? Nope. We don't, I'm not, we don't need all of them. 
In fact, I think that's going to help us because uh, you have uh, you have this lot of translation on board. Which paragraph is it? 1810. 1810. Uh, 1810. Because pebble can mean cord, and that's what I'm wondering if it means here. Uh, 1810, hidden in the ground is his rope. Yeah, his snare is on the path. Okay, so that is a clear translation. So, Kavlehu, okay, so how's the baby reading it? He's reading the Pasuk as take the garment of a person who co-signed for a stranger and on behalf of a strange woman, rope him. Rope him on behalf of a strange woman. Like what? Or snare him, yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, like, yeah, like, that's what I'm thinking, like rope him yeah. or tie him, you know, yeah. Well, let's see, he'll explain now, I hope. Well, Bir Inyan, uh, and the explanation of the matter is Take the garment of the co-signer and his uh, and his Malbush, another word for garment, because he can't pay. I'll talk a lot. Okay, that's even more explicit than which is that we don't have mercy on him, mm -hmm. right? Uh because he co-signed for a stranger, He trusted a guy who he didn't know, he didn't recognize Lo Yeda, and he didn't know. Who niskal He was foolish and negligent. Okay, uh, no pity for the fool. Vihne al halove roy lachmol, but on the borrower, that's David, it is proper to have compassion. He had sorak dachakov hevil lulavos, lulavos, because the because uh, uh, necessity forced him to borrow. Yeah. Sorry, this should only occur to me now. Is it only with this whole situation? Would this pasuk only be applying if Zavi doesn't know Isaac? Like if you were to know Isaac in this whole situation where it played out? Like, would that actually change anything? Like, should he now... If he knows him? If he knows Isaac, should he now have compassion? I don't think so, because it's still... It I, wouldn't change, right? I don't think it would change, yeah. Okay, so... It, it'll make it harder to have compassion if he knows him, but it's not going to change. Compassion. Harder to... No, I think harder to... Well, I guess if he... I mean, it depends on, uh, I guess, whether you know them and likes him or not, you know? <laughs> but, like, if you know the person... And I think it's I think it's harder to have... Uh, um, Sorry, it's hard to not have compassion, right? Yeah, it's hard to not have compassion if you know the person because you're tempted to have compassion. Yeah, yeah. Unless you don't like him. Unless you don't like him, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that, that becomes a funny situation. Right. Get, get, get your enemy to co sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, is that a good mislike technique? No. Well, like yeah. with me, uh, Iver. <laughs> but it's hard to outlet your expression. Uh, yeah, it's true. In a legal way. In a legal way, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we call them the Nuba versus the Torah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Ba Oliver Shalom. Oliver Shalom. Hmm. Is that Oliver Shalom? Mm -hmm. Is this Shlomo? Is he talking about Shlomo? He's telling he realized that Shlomo's dead. <laughs> uh, I feel like I've seen you being able to do that in others. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think, I think it might be that he's quoting. Is it like Allah Indian? Could be. I just think it's weird. Of course, Chaim, I think, feels like you would usually um, expand acronyms unless they're very common ones like Zal and Al Shalom. So that's why I think it is Al Shalom. I don't know. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's coming to teach about what Chaval said. Every man should be in your eyes like a bandit. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Every man should be in your eyes like a bandit. That's really interesting. Hmm. That's pretty, uh negative outlook it is right and what about being have you is done uh right you know yeah I and mean, that's the classic question but yeah um uh yeah right i mean the plain shot is uh being done call out and is not about how you make decisions with them you know uh you it's about how you judge their actions when they're ambiguous or like we saw in ramban it's how you verbally judge them yeah right all right fine so in other words you shouldn't Every person could be abandoned in your eyes because they, you know, uh, you should, you know, um, what the expression trust but verify. This is like more severe than that. Like, don't trust until you verify, you know, like verify that they're trustworthy and then trust them. So, but is it talking about like all people you don't know or is this including people you know? Oh, I think it's all people you don't know. Like right. that, like call out them, like the, like the uh, every, every yeah, average person. That, yeah. Al Kane, uh, in Lacha Lift Talk, Lo Yadata. There you go. Uh, you shouldn't trust in this person who you don't know. La Aro, Lo Aruva, to um, to co sign for on behalf of him. So, is, is he saying that this is talking to both the Zed and Isaac? I think right. It's like it's, for David, don't have mercy, and for Isaac, it is uh, it's treat David like a bandit. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, 
Okay, now where is, how is he going to do the roping thing? Rope on behalf of a strange woman, rope him. Okay, so what kind of ropes are we talking about? Obviously tent ropes. Okay. I don't know. Uh, and, and someone who um, <clears throat> who co-signed on behalf of a strange woman take his rope, meaning to say even his tent ropes, Kikah, if you even take his, his tent ropes, and don't have pity on him. Mm -hmm. That guy erred even worse than the first one. Right? So this is talking about if Isaac co-signed for Davida, right? Mm -hmm. Then that's an even worse mistake. Why? Why? He trusted a strange woman. And that's worse than trusting. I guess so. Is it because it was worse because he allowed himself to get like seduced, uh, not seduced like like seductive woman, but like like you know like and like oh so such a yes yeah exactly yeah yeah. I think you've got to explain. It. Okay. Lamanu. Uh, oh, the problem. Yeah, so it's 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 uh, indicting a one who trusts a woman more than one who trusts a man. Again, an unknown woman, an unknown man. Oh. Oh, this is, yeah. <laughs> you'll find uh, you'll find more uh, trust trustworthiness in men and discipline in men than in women. All right, so uh, it seems like it's not saying that. No, like, not like I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. like. But I think my shot also works out yeah, better. Yeah. It's like you're more of a dupe if you get like, uh, you know, if you allow yourself to be swayed by pity. You know, like in other words, like David, if David has a suit and a tie, and he says, "I have a business plan," and uh, and you trust him, okay, that's one thing. But if if Davida comes with like like puppy dog eyes, you know, and like fluttering, you know, and uh, and then you get swayed by that, then like like man, like you shouldn't be in business, you know. The nismach inyan hazeh la'ter amar lamala ukli akar tipsei das. Oh, he's he's chaining them together, right? He's chaining, he's linking this to um, roping them together. He's <laughs> tying this to a a, a a precious vessel is lips of knowledge. Ki in tipsei das lamisha mizalzo b'diburo la'arav ba'ad zar. Uh, there are clearly no lips of knowledge, and the guy who degrades himself in speech by co-signing on behalf of a stranger uh, and a strange woman, and trusts in them to not suffer a mishap from this. This is not fundamentally different from the Mitzvah's David, but the practical, um, he is extending the practical to both parties, which I think does explain a little bit the complexity of the case that, and also supports what I'm saying, uh, a little bit in the sense that like there is a common mistake here of well okay i guess he's not he's not saying it outright but it, it but creates more, it together. more ground yeah more ground to say that everyone needs to learn lessons from here you know um i mean it's funny because like except for you i guess right because for david be, you know because it doesn't what fault does him do? for not paying his loan like maybe he just can't i mean obviously you should pay your loan so maybe that's like implicit here but yeah yeah you should you should pay your loan you should not co sign for him and you should uh, not feel guilty for not taking his garment. Right. Yeah. Not feel guilty for for taking his garment. Yeah. Right. Or yeah. Tent. Or ten peg. Yeah. I guess also there's nothing yeah. Yeah. being addressed to David because like it's not like David recruited a stranger to sign for him. Like. Oh uh, yeah. I mean maybe yeah, he did. Maybe he didn't. I mean right. we, we, I don't really know how the co-signing. I mean usually it probably be Zev who, who. I mean it could be both. Right. Recruiting a co-signer could have come from you or could have come from him. You know, like if you're if, if David senses Zev's unwillingness to give him the the loan, then he might look for a co-signer. Right. I guess e even still, like even if David was recruiting a random person, the random person didn't have to agree. So right. that's why it's his. Yeah. His. Yeah. Okay. Now, should we do the Meiri and then do Derek Nister? Mm. See what happens. Okay. So Meiri connects for the PV. Oh no 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 no. Never mind. He connects to the next bus. So we can't do the Meiri until. Yeah until later on this week. All right, uh, let's see who else can we do here. Um, should we do Rob Bog? Let's do Rob Bog. So go in the back. It should be on the second to the last page on the left side. And there's a typo. It says 15, but really it's supposed to be 16. And unfortunately, I can't send this into the source line people like I do with uh, all the other people. Mm -hmm. Uh, you see it there? It's the last page, yeah. Uh, I think in your in your packet. Is it the second to the last page in your packet? Uh, left column. Yeah. The page, top top of the column. Nope. Second to the last page. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This one. 
Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's Everyone got it? Yeah. Okay. Um, Behold, someone who co signs for a stranger. Or, ah, he does he does it metaphorically. Okay. Vuhu Hanimshach El Hamis Orer Latavas Hagufios. He he basically is drawn after the the appetitive faculty, the emotional, like the desiring part of you, uh, to bodily desires. That's different than the appetitive, right? Uh, it is the appetitive in the five part model. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's the part that has appetites. Oh. Um, unless what you, in oh, the three part model. I'm thinking of the zon. Yeah, so the zon is the actual bodily needs. Right. But the needs themselves don't generate the desire. The appetitive faculty like translates into desire. Correct. Yeah. What's the five part model? Or the five part model is from the Rambam, which is you have five faculties. There's the the nutritive faculty, which is basically like your body's physiology and just physiological uh, processes. There's the sense, the senses, mm -hmm. which is the five senses. There's the imagination, which records sense impressions and can modify them however mm -hmm. they want. Uh, like, you know, and making the new combinations and stuff. Then there's the appetitive faculty, which moves, it's the desire, uh, the faculty of desire and aversion, mm -hmm. moves you towards something or away from something, mm -hmm. um, seeks pain, uh, seeks pleasure, seeks pleasure uh, avoids pain, yeah. Um, and then the rational faculty. Um, and so those are the five, yeah. Um, okay, so, Vuhua Nimshach Elako Hamis Orer Latagas Aguvia. So this is the part of you that is drawn after the appetitive faculty for bodily desires. Strip it of all of its possessions in order to, to exact punishment from it. I don't know if, if I, I hesitate to use the punishment, retribution from it. So basically it's saying radical acceptance. <laughs> I wasn't prepared to say that. In fact, I don't even know what you mean by that. No. Okay. Yeah. Saying, yeah. He's saying the opposite. Using the opposite, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, so what I think he's saying so far, and we'll see if there's anyone know what they think he's saying so far. Uh, herbs, you have to uh, like not like the less you eat it, the more control you'll have over it, yeah. So, like, don't give, don't like give in to your desires. So, okay, so this is what I'm not sure about. One way of saying it is it could be, uh, don't feed it, but the thing of take away its garment, take away its possessions, to me might mean get rid of the stimulus. Uh -huh. You know, like let's say people who struggle with like junk food, you know, you know, like, like snacking on junk food. If you don't have it in the house, mm -hmm. so it becomes like very much easier to avoid the temptation, you know? So get rid of the, like maybe again, this because the fact is this is the possessions, the possessions of the appetitive faculty. What does it mean um, exactly? That's what I'm not sure about. That's why I was hesitating when I translated it. Um, and also, what does he mean to get rid of? Meaning, like, like remove from the room or from the rack. Right. Meaning, like, you know? like, like, Zeus is still collected from Isaac, but then no, no, no. We're not talking about literal anymore. Oh, we're not talking about. Okay. This is all metaphorical now. Okay. So I yeah, yeah. So in the in the muscle, so we translate this into the muscle. Okay. So. So Isaac is the misor. Yeah, Isaac is the appetitive faculty. David is the bodily desires. <laughs> and then I, I think we haven't said what your part is yet, which is going to be the next part. So let's, this is really the whole thing. Again. Wait, what's the difference between the appetitive faculty and the bodily desires? I think the bodily desires, okay. It, that's why I was also hesitant to just apply the five part model to the raw bog, because I don't know if he's working with the same things. Mm -hmm. uh, but bodily desires would be the, the actual desire generated by the body and the appetitive part would be the part that of you that moves towards it or away from it. That's what I'm sensing. Let's read the whole thing and see what happens. Oh, never mind. All right. Forget those assignments. Okay. Crumple up the uh, you know, the the uh, the thing that like when, when the school play comes out and they assign all the cards, just crumple it up, you know, it's a mistake, right? Uh, the intellect is the thing that cosigns on behalf of the stranger. And on behalf of the strange woman, oh, now I don't even know what he's talking okay. about. Is the desiring soul. Desiring soul is the difference from the Kol Kamis Orer. That might be the same thing as the intellect. It's not. But the intellect is no. signing on behalf of the Nefesh Hamis Aveh. I mean, we did this on the Rabagim Gan Eden earlier in the year, 
that yeah. there's the uh but I, I don't I don't know how to play through it. Let's just see what happens. Come up to kind of like we explained in the beginning of this book. Oh no. We have to go back to the beginning. Earlier. It needs earlier. Yeah, yeah earlier. When okay. Says, um, 11, 40, 15. 11, 15. Yeah, all right, fine. Um, okay, hold on. Ha mashkono, take it collateral li pare mimeno. Exactly right. Remember, he had seiko who ha makabal ha onesh. The seiko is the thing that receives punishment. From the fact that it doesn't get enjoyment out of these degrading actions. Okay. I have no idea. Uh, I thought I was in. I'm following him. Oh, yeah. Um, is it maybe that the um, the CEO, like it's not like the CEO, it's not just that like you desire something. Yeah. And, like you engage in that, but your CFO like gets drawn after it and like kind of rationalizes it. So that's what I thought he was saying, uh, because we did that in the Rebbein Yona early in the year, that the the the, the appetitive or, or desiring capacity can't act without the consent of the of the of the intellect, which means that you have to rationalize it. Uh, that's how the Rebbein Yona said. It. He's saying that the intellect just doesn't get enjoyment out of these. Well, that's the well, that's the negative. That's, yeah, like that's why the it doesn't work. Well, oh, that's why it doesn't work. So you're saying that it gets punishment. I thought he was explaining what the punishment is. Yeah, the pun meaning you get drawn. You're the the. Seho gives like a stomach yeah. to engaging in the titles. Yeah. And then, but it just there is doesn't no... get anything out of it. I see. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, that's why right. it's the co center because. Oh, okay, like, that makes sense. Yeah, because it's, um, it's, it's signing, just getting liability. Yeah, 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 it's not, yeah, it's just getting liability and yeah. not any, any benefit. Yeah. Right. Here's what I, I suggest we do because we, we don't really have time now, but I suggest we uh, let this type of interpretation roll around in our minds. In other words, if you did have to apply this to the internal family system, then what would the what would the uh, role assignments be here, and, okay. and then see if we get an idea out of it? Yeah. Yeah. Just also one other thought, like if there wasn't that desire to like give into your taivas, and you were able to just look at it with your seichel, then it would be like really clear, like this yeah. is a mistake. Exactly. I mean, You're not going to get any enjoyment right. out of this. Like like yeah. like just like factually, like you right. could. So like the only way that, and I think that's like along lines of what we're saying, like the only way that he's able to engage in this. But the only reason why he has a desire to engage in it and then he's able to engage it is because there's this desire to give into Taiva, which leads to rationalization. And then only after the fact can he like see why that was a mistake. Yeah. Because like it's very clear, like right. don't do that. Right. Yeah. And, and and yeah, it should be clear to the intellect that it's just not getting yeah. anything out of it. Yeah. All right. So the plan would be to not return to this tomorrow. But if we do think of an interpretation along these lines, I would like to, to talk it out like maybe outside of here, like specifically in the jargon of it. <laughs> Specifically, I prohibit any expression of ideas other than that. Yeah. All right. Let us stop here for today. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.